All right guys, Frank Root here, and we're gonna show you how to set up your brakes on a Promoto MX. Uh, first thing we're gonna do is we'll go ahead and turn a bike and a radio on. Just hit the power button there. It'll beep as it turns on. I already have a battery installed and plugged in. I will press the power button here on the bike. All right, and once I have steering output, everything is initialized and ready to go. Um, so for me, the first part of setting up the brakes is always just gonna be checking the brakes, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and spin the front tire, make sure it spins freely and it's not dragging down too much, uh, if at all. And then I'll go ahead and hit the brake on the radio and feel how much resistance there is. So right now, there's a pretty good amount of resistance on the front brake. That's actually set really well. Everything's nice and clean and ready to go. Uh, but we're gonna go ahead and tear one apart, show you guys how to set it up from scratch in case you need to replace your brake housing cable or your brake rotor gets dirty. So I'm gonna go ahead and power off the bike. Just hold the power button down until I hear the fan shut off on the speedo. And then I'll hold the power button down on the transmitter until it beeps. Uh, we'll set that off to the side and to set up the brake from scratch, I need to pull this uh, right panel off so that I can get to where the brake servo is. So we're gonna go ahead and start by removing the rider. I just basically pull the jersey up a little bit here in the front and the back of the torso. Okay, and I'll go ahead and pull this body clip out, set it off to the side, and then I'll push the pin from the front out and then pull it out the back. It's got like a little head on it, so it just stops on the rider. And then you can just kind of rotate uh, the torso of the rider up. Then you have this uh, mount here that sits on top of the legs and you just do about an eighth turn counterclockwise and it'll unlock and you just pull it straight off. And then to pull the legs off, I just put my thumb right here like in the heel and then put my hand on the Nerf bar and just kind of push it up and it'll take the boots off the pegs and I'll go ahead and set that off to the side. And you see there's a little little mount here on the peg so it just kind of snaps on and off there. So I'm just gonna go ahead and come over here on the right side. I'm gonna remove these two screws to take off this right front fender panel. And I'll take those screws off the fender and set it out of the way. And then first I'm gonna do, I'm gonna remove this front axle by pulling it off to the side and basically you just pull the wheel out so you're pulling the rotor out of the brake assembly I set that wheel off to the side and then i'm going to go ahead and show you how to remove the brake housing cable uh, so a lot we took the front wheel off so that we could clean everything but a lot of times if you're just tuning the brake or taking the brake housing cable off uh, if it's been damaged you don't actually uh, need to remove the front wheel so basically i just use my finger i push the brake up and then I'll grab the housing here, the black part, and I'll go ahead and pull that up until it clears the guide that it fits into. And I'll basically pull the cable out the side and get the ferrule for the cable out of the bottom of the servo arm here. Oop. And basically run that out. And then you can basically just pull the housing up until the cable comes into this gap and then it'll come out the side pretty easy. And then you have another uh, clasp here behind the number plate. So you just go ahead and push that out. It just kind of snaps in there uh, lightly. And then you can pull the cable housing out. And then on this side, you have your servo for brakes. You have your servo horn. So I just go ahead and push the horn down a little bit. Uh, and then I'll hold the cable and then kind of push the horn back up, pull the cable out the side and then up here. And then you just kind of pull the housing out straight and it'll come out of the guide. So there's your brake assembly right there. So you can pull that off. And then uh, last but not least, we'll go ahead and pull the brake assembly down here on the caliper apart. First thing I do is I'll take my 050 wrench and I'll basically just push this brake spring up and then out so that it comes out of the little groove right here in the pin screw. And now that's loose. I'll take my two mil driver and I'll take the screw out of the piston there and pull the arm off and you have a couple of parts here right you have your servo arm you have a, a spring uh, which i went, went ahead and set down there then you have a little foam dust cover uh, that's also black then you have your piston 
I always take the piston out just so I can inspect it. And then I'll use my two mil driver and I'll pull this pin screw out. And pull, when you pull this pin screw out, you probably saw that the spring fell out, but we have a little brake spring there for the discs. And then the discs, they just fall out uh, if you shake them. So we got our two brake discs there. So again, the second part there where I pulled out this screw, pin, the brake disc, you only need to do that if you're cleaning the brakes, not if you're just setting up a new cable. So the first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go ahead and use some of this MagnaForce 2, uh, basically electric motor, electric parts cleaner, um, spray it on the rag here. You can also use like a nitro cleaner, you can use a brake cleaner, you can use rubbing alcohol, um, like 90% or higher, uh, all of those things will work. And I'm just gonna rub the brake surface on this rag to clean it. And you can see there's kind of like a, a tapered cut on this piston here. So the full face side, that's the outside. The actual braking surface is gonna be the inside, the part that has the step on it. So we'll just clean that on the rag and those are good to go. And then I'm actually gonna clean the brake rotor too. So we got six screws here holding on the rotor. So I'll just use my power driver here, pop those off one at a time. I'll pull my brake rotor off and then I'll clean it the same way on the rag. Just kind of wipe it off. Try and keep my fingers kind of more on the side of the rotor so I don't get any oil from my skin on them. Kind of clean that up. It'll tear up the rag a little bit because it's got some sharp edges on it. Then I always use a microfiber just to try and a clean one to just try and get some of the lint fuzz off that you might get. All right, now that, it, now that all those parts are clean, we can start with the reassembly process. So I'm gonna go ahead and take my rotor here and I'm gonna install it on the front wheel and hub assembly. This is the correct way, so the tires are gonna spin this way, so you want the, the shallow uh, surface to be going this way. And you can install it this way, it just looks a little visually awkward, uh, but it'll work the same. So I'll just put that on there, take my two mil driver here, and I will just put in these screws. You just tighten them down all the way. Uh, no need for, for keeping them loose or anything. And I always go in a crossing pattern here. So I did one across and then I'll go here across. Uh, it's always good to tighten down screws that oppose uh, in this manner. All right, and then when you get your brake assembly complete, you always wanna make sure that the rotor is moving nice and freely, that it moves around up and down. It doesn't get stuck up or if it gets twisted, it gets stuck. You just want it to move nice and free so that it can self-center itself when it's operating. So we'll set that back off to the side and we'll go ahead and install our brake pads here. So we have this uh, slot channel right here and they both fit in there. So we'll put the two braking surfaces together. So you have the full faces on the outside and we'll go ahead and kind of install them in there. And then I always turn it around and I kind of put my finger in there to hold it. And you see we got them kind of pushed towards the outside there. And then I can kind of slide that spring in and then I'll take the pin screw and I'll put that in. And it goes through the first uh, brake pad and the spring, but it doesn't go through the second brake pad. So you gotta keep holding it. And then you can go ahead and take your driver and screw this guy in. And this one doesn't need to be crazy tight. It's just kind of holding those guys in place. So we'll get there and you can see the pin came all the way to the edge here. All right, so now we're gonna put the wheel and get, fit the rotor back in here. And what I do is I go ahead and slide the rotor back and then I actually get it above the brake pads a little bit. So you can see the axles quite a bit above. And then I'll take one of my tools here and I'll basically split those brake pads apart and then try and drop the rotor into them. Um, and now you can see that everything's aligned. So we have the axles lined up and then I'll basically come over to this side, take my axle and start to run it through here and push it through. I can see it coming out the other side and then I'll just grab my uh, 2.5 driver here and run it in. And that one we just run in full tight. Um, this screw here for the clamp on the right side, we actually leave the screw pretty loose. We just want it we don't want it to be tightened down all the way and we don't want to even have it snug because we want this guy to be able to slide on here. Uh, and what that does is that if it gets knocked off of alignment, you can move the forks and it'll basically self-center itself and keep everything uh, not over constrained and free with the fork movement. All right, 
So now we have our wheel assembly and all the, the brake pads installed. Next thing to do is install the piston. After you've been running, you're probably gonna have a little bit of dirt in this assembly. Uh, while this is all apart, it's good to blow that hole out, maybe clean it out a little bit if you can. Um, but like the piston, if it has some dirt on it, always just take an old toothbrush and just kind of clean some of the dust off of it, make sure that it's good. Um, and then I'll install this piston by hand and it just turns clockwise. And I'm really just looking to make sure that I can not, I don't need the servo arm on, I don't need any leverage, I can just move it nice and freely. If I can't, I'll check for any potential high spots of plastic or dirt, maybe, you know, cut off a little high spot with a hobby knife. But this piston fits really well, it's nice and free. Um, so what I'll do is I'll just tighten this guy by hand and I'll get it close and I'll move the front wheel and then I'll just kind of move the piston until it starts to drag a little bit and then I'll back it off just barely until it's not dragging. And what we want to do is that's kind of your ideal starting brake attention. So we're going to want to put the servo arm all the way down with the brake rotor right there to where it's almost applying tension, but not quite. So we're going to go ahead and put this foam pad uh, on there. And then I'm going to go ahead and install the spring on uh, here. So you basically go ahead and put this over uh, the channel. And there's actually a little, a little knob right there that the spring needs to fit behind. So you kind of go ahead and get that on. And then we're going to, again, try and put this guy as low as possible, uh, given that brake piston set setup that we had. So we'll get that guy on, and then we're going to go ahead and install this two millimeter screw here. And that is a pretty small thread, so I'm, I'm going to finish it off here by hand. Just get it, get it snug there. And then we'll go ahead and get this brake uh, piston spring. Go ahead and align that. So basically just use the wrench to push it, push it up and get it over and then back into the channel here in this pin screw. So we'll get the spring right in there. So now we have that brake tension so that it'll self-release the brake. All right, so now we're gonna reinstall the cable. And what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna loosen the set screw on this guy a little bit and kind of pull it down towards the bottom so that I know that it's set loose so I can show you guys how to set it. I'm gonna kind of retighten it a little bit just so that it can't fall off the end. We do solder the end of the wire so that it won't fray out, the cable won't. So it should still be easy to get on and off, but it's just easier to start with the ferrule on there. So I'm actually gonna start first by turning the radio on and the bike, and I'm gonna make sure that the servo arm here on the servo is in the correct orientation. So we have a servo trim knob here. It's the far right knob. And what we wanna do is we wanna set it all the way uh, counterclockwise so that the arm is actually trimmed up as high as possible. And at that setting, we need to make sure that there's a gap between the servo arm and the guide housing for the cable. And there is a gap there. It's probably only about a millimeter and a half and that's what we're looking for. We want the smallest gap possible but to make sure that those aren't touching because if they're touching, then you're always gonna have some tension on the servo and that's not good for servo life. So we're set, everything's set good there. So I'm gonna go ahead and power the bike and the radio back off while I install this cable housing. All right, so there's two ends to the cable here. We have the silver end and the, the black ferrule there. The silver ferrule is permanent and that is the one that we're gonna go ahead and have on the brake uh, caliper side and the black uh, side has the adjustment with the set screws, that's gonna go on the servo side. So I'm just gonna start by getting this guy in here. Now I have the vehicle powered off. I'm actually gonna push that uh, servo arm down a little bit, get the ferrule and get the cable through the slot. So we'll go ahead and do that and we'll get the, the ferrule up in there. And then we're gonna go ahead and run the cable through the slot in the front of the guide housing. You can see we kind of fit it through there. And then we're gonna push the black housing, black cable housing down into that slot. Okay, then we'll run it th over the handlebars and then we'll come over here and right behind the number plate, there's a little clip uh, in section here and it just kind of lightly snaps in there, holds it in place. And then as we come down here, what we'll do is we'll put the cable through the slot and then push the housing through. And then when we come to the bottom, we're gonna go kind of the opposite. We're gonna go all the way through the bottom pull the cable through 
the brake actuator arm and get the ferrule aligned in there. And then we're actually gonna pull this whole assembly up and I'm actually gonna push up on the brake with my finger and then my other hand's gonna pull this housing up, get everything aligned in that slot and then the housing will come back down and basically I'll push this guy down and the housing will align here in the guide and now everything is fixed and set in that brake assembly. All right, so the, kind of the last major part here, we're actually going to set the brake tension. This is a little uh, challenging, but not too hard to do. It's kind of the last step. We'll go ahead and turn the radio on. We'll turn the bike on. Okay, so we have our trim knob all the way down. We also have a front brake travel knob here, second from the left. And that one right now is turned all the way up so that we can kind of see maximum brake pressure. So we have, our, uh, we have our ferrule here that was loose. We'll go ahead and make sure that, it's fit up, that it fits up in there really well. And we'll take our 050 driver, and there's actually a hole here in the front of the servo arm. And we'll put that through until it locks into the set screw that's in the ferrule. All right, so now I'm kind of holding the ferrule in place with the set screw, and then I'll use my pliers here and I'll hold the bottom of the cable lightly, and I'll kind of loosen that set screw a little bit. And now I'm going to basically pull the cable down to take the tension out of it lightly until I just see the actuator arm on the other side start moving. So I want to basically take all the slack out of the line, but I don't want to start applying brake. So I see it just moved there. So I'm just gonna barely push it, push down the arm on the other side. And then I'm gonna hold the cable in place here and I'm gonna tighten the set screw down. You wanna get it pretty tight, but it is a cable so you don't have to go crazy. Uh, make sure that you have thread lock on that set screw. It's gonna come from the factory with thread lock on it. So if it just feels like it's working loose, you can add a little extra thread lock. And then now we'll, we'll go ahead and check our brakes. So same thing as before, just rotate the brake and then push on the brake pedal and see how much brake pressure you have. We actually have a pretty good amount of brake pressure here. You can see I don't have to push too far on the brake trigger before it starts to move the caliper arm and starts to apply brake. One thing that you can do is if you do have a little bit of a gap, so you start pushing the brake trigger and the, the caliper arm's not moving right away, you can turn the front brake trim knob up a little bit and basically turn it up until you see this arm uh, on the piston start to move a little bit. And that'll actually engage the brake a little bit quicker, but you wanna make sure that you're not uh, actually dragging when the brake is released. So that's set pretty good right there. If you wanna um, you know, run on the street and do some power slides to where you're more rear brake only, you do have the front brake travel knob here. You can turn it down to get a little bit less front brake pressure. So you can see it definitely spins a little easier now. You can turn it all the way counterclockwise or all the way down and you'll have very little front brakes. You're basically just getting rear brake from the motor through the drivetrain at this point. So I generally run on dirt most of the time and I run it up pretty high. I like a lot of front brake. Um, some of the other guys don't. It just kind of depends on driving style and preference. Uh, but it's a really good tuning option. It's one thing to consider with a motorcycle you have a lot of weight transferring to that front tire and almost all of your braking power does come from the front tire. So it's really important to get that brake set up right. Now I'm gonna go ahead and power everything off that the brakes are set well. Hold the button on the motorcycle, hold the button on the transmitter till it beeps. I'll set that off to the side and then we'll just go ahead and restall, reinstall the last couple of things here and we'll be all set. We'll just locate this panel. There's actually some bosses in the panel and a boss here and a boss here. So you can actually feel them kind of locate in together. And it'll usually just kind of stay there. I'll get my screws here. All right, we'll grab our legs and we're gonna go ahead and reinstall those. So kind of the opposite of what we did before. I actually grab it here, like on top of the foot and the back of the heel, and I'll put another finger underneath the foot peg, and I'll kind of basically just pull it down over till it snaps in. And then we'll grab our twist lock here. I always pull the jersey, make sure that the jersey kind of doesn't get trapped underneath it. 
and we'll put it on and it'll slide over and then it's uh, about an eighth turn clockwise to lock it in. Push the rider down and same thing here, we'll run the pin through the back, through the front, and then I always take the pin here. I always go from the left side because I'm left-handed, uh, but you can go from either side. But I always flip the pin so that the bend in the pin comes towards the torso. Um, so it just makes it a little less obvious that there's a pin under there. But you can see when you pull the jersey back down, you can't really see the pin very much on either side. All right, so today we showed you how to set up, clean, and tune your brakes on the Promoto MX. For more videos like this on the Promoto MX or any other Losi vehicles, please check out the Losi YouTube channel.